His attention to courtesy and correct behavior anticipated his political philosophy. You see, George Washington, we look at him today and we think, oh, he had it all put together. He was the American Sphinx. He was always under control. But actually, as a young boy and growing up as a teenager, he had a, an incredible temper. He could be set off so quickly. And he realized that that was going to hold him back, and he had to come up with resolutions. He had to resolve to change. The great news about George Washington is that that ability is within every single person. That there's nothing that made George Washington so special that only he could do something like that. But it does take discipline. It does take the willingness to grow and change. Catherine Kirsten, in her George Washington's Character book, said... What can we learn from Washington and his contemporaries about character building? They teach us, most importantly, that the soul can be schooled. I love that line. The soul can be schooled. I mean, we think, think of the education you've had. I mean, I went through high school. I went through college and halfway through a master's program. Nobody told me the soul could be schooled. Nobody told me that resolutions were important. How many people never heard of resolutions outside of New Year's resolutions growing through school, <laughs> right? And that's something we try for a couple weeks and forget about it, right? Exercising reason and will, applying mind, heart, and will together, we can make so many changes beyond even what we can fathom right now. But let's take a look at America today. If that was George Washington's generation, and it wasn't just George Washington, you may have heard of Ben Franklin and his 13 resolutions, his 13 virtues that he focused on. You may have heard of a Jonathan Edwards. He's considered by many the greatest American mind. And he had 70 resolutions that he studied every day of his life from 19 until the day of his death. You see, resolutions were a very important principle for all of the names that we know throughout history. And yet today it's an unheard of concept. What happened? I'll tell you what happened. Stephen Covey would answer that question. He would say, as my, this is from his book, Seven Habits. He said, as my study took me back through 200 years of writing about success, I noticed a startling pattern emerging in the content of literature. I began to feel more and more of the success literature over the past 50 years was superficial. It was filled with social image consciousness, techniques and quick fixes, with social band-aids and aspirin that addressed acute problems, and sometimes even appeared to solve them temporarily, but left the underlying chronic problem untouched to fester and resurface time and again. When we look at society today, don't we see that? We see everybody, this politician promises this, and he's going to fix all of our problems. He's going to fix the economy. You know what? Nobody out here is going to fix anything. It's in here that we got to fix some things. But today, nobody wants to work in here. Everybody wants to point out there and say, this is the problem, and that's the problem. Very few people want to look in here and say, this is the problem. Jose Ortega y Gasset, in his book, Revolt of the Masses, here's how he described it. The most radical division that is possible to make of humanity is that which splits us into two classes of creatures. Those who make demands on themselves piling up difficulties and duties, and those who demand nothing special of themselves, but for whom to live is to be every moment what they already are, without imposing upon themselves any effort towards perfection, mere buoys that float on the waves. Doesn't that describe our modern culture? So many people just trying to get by, looking for the next entertainment just to pass, just killing time. And yet here we are all enjoying the benefits. If we go back in time, it was men and women of the caliber and stature of a George Washington, of a Ben Franklin, of a Jonathan Edwards, 
and many others, it was their character, their principles, that helped create the society that we seem to take so for granted and we're in the process of losing.